So in titrometry, uh, what you're measuring is uh, volume. So that's, that's what serves as the analytical signal. Some terms that we need to uh, review uh, include titration, which is just the process of uh, delivering a solution of known concentration into another solution, which is called the, the titrant. So the one that has a known concentration is called the titrant. So um, note that titrant normally contains the analyte, but sometimes uh, the titrant or the, the, the one that uh, is, is of known concentration is the analyte. And then another term is equivalence point. So this is the point where um, enough titrant has been added to your analyte. And uh, it's also called, sometimes called stoichiometric point. So physically, sometimes it's difficult to see if your equivalence point has been reached. So most of the time we use what's called an indicator. So it's a substance that changes color in response to a chemical change. So when, when the indicator changes color, uh, that means you have reached the end point. And ideally, you want the endpoint to coincide with your equivalence point. And then finally, you have stoichiometric ratio. So it's the uh, mole ratio between the titrant and the analyte based on a balanced chemical reaction. Common equipment or materials needed include burette, so burette, uh, normally in the lab, you use the 50 ml burette, class A, for uh, to get accurate measurements. And then for uh, your receiving container, you have either Erlenmeyer flask or a beaker. And of course, you need something for your burette, right, to, to, uh, to hold. So you need an iron stand and clamp. And sometimes your iron stand, iron stand has a white background, which is also sometimes needed for your titration to clearly see the, the first sign of uh, color change by your indicator. And of course you have uh, the automated titration setup where the titrant is pumped into the titrant at a fixed flow rate. And uh, the the pH of the titrant is monitored as you uh, as you add more uh, titrant. So this is good if you all, uh, want to get titration curves between the uh, titrant and the analyte. So general procedure: uh, you prepare the analyte and add the indicator if applicable, because there are some titrations that don't need indicators because your titrants are self-indicating. The next step is to prepare your titrant. So you load your solution into the burette. Um, make sure the, the meniscus is on the, where it should be. <laughs> and a part of part of the titrant preparation is called standardization, where um, you you determine the actual the, or the exact concentration of your titrant for more accurate uh, calculations. And then you gradually add your titrant to your analyte until the endpoint is reached. And then, of course, you perform your calculations. So, at the equivalence point or stoichiometric point, uh, we know that the, uh, uh, the the moles of the titrant can be calculated based on the molarity of the titrant, normally obtained uh, by a standardization times the volume of the titrant to reach the equivalence point. Once you know the moles of the titrant, you can relate that to the moles, or you can get the moles of the analyte by multiplying it by the mole ratio or the stoichiometric ratio between the titrant and the analyte. And then finally, the end goal is to calculate for the molarity of the analyte. So that's uh, simply the moles of analyte divided by the volume of analyte in liters. Okay, so um, we will be talking about three types of titrometry in this webinar. The first one is acid-base titrometry. 
The second is complexometric tetrimetry, and the third one is uh, redox tetrimetry.